I've been living in Los Angeles for almost a decade now, and I go out, being honest, almost every weekend. And as you can imagine, LA nightlife and Los Angeles nightlife is incredible. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my five favorite nightlife spots. Oh, hi, Mark. What's up, Fichero fam? Welcome back to my channel, where I like to experience everything that life has to offer. As most of you know, I do a lot of vlogs when I'm constantly going out, going to different parties, bars, restaurants, events, attractions, and a lot more. And I've done a lot of videos about Los Angeles. I have a huge playlist listed below in the description to all these different things I've done here in LA. And I gotta say, LA is a pretty big place. And with LA being just so big, there are a lot of different spots to go out in. And after years of going out, going to so many different locations, I'm gonna talk about my five favorite nightlife locations in LA. Number one, Hermosa Beach Pier. This one is amazing. I love Hermosa Beach. And I wanted to start off with this one because I feel like this is the most underrated. When people think of LA, what do they think of? Hollywood, right? Or West Hollywood or Santa Monica. Those are the big ones a lot of people think of right away. I did not even know about Hermosa Beach Pier until a couple years after living in LA. I will say it is a bit more south in terms of the LA area, but what's great about the pier itself is that your classic pier feel with all these different bars right there. Tons of amazing bars and restaurants, and even in that area or in that radius, you have places like Barnacles, which is kind of like the locals dive bar. You have Creamy Boys, which is phenomenal ice cream. You have Radici, which is a great Italian restaurant. There's so many great spots right there. And what's kind of cool about Hermosa Beach Pier as well, I gotta say, I think, although I'm talking about nightlife in this video, Hermosa Beach Pier is great for Sunday fun days. I actually like the pier more during the day than the night. So let's say if you're looking for not nightlife in terms of stuff to do at night when it comes to drinking or partying, but you're looking to party during the day or do a dager, as it's called, or a day rager, Hermosa Beach Pier is excellent for that. Another big pro tip I'll give you, like I said, if you are visiting LA, if you go kind of down the line when it comes to like LA, you have Manhattan Beach and then Hermosa Beach. So one huge pro tip is hit Manhattan Beach first, maybe hit Culture Brewing Company, then maybe go to Shellback Tavern, which is your classic beach bar, then walk on the boardwalk from Manhattan Beach Pier to Hermosa Beach Pier, it's about a 1.7 mile walk, then party at Hermosa Beach Pier. Gotta be honest, Manhattan Beach, although it's beautiful, I don't think it's a really good nightlife spot to be like, okay, we're just gonna go out in Manhattan Beach. There are a good amount of bars, but I feel like you're better off treating Manhattan Beach as almost like a combo where you hit Manhattan Beach first and then Hermosa Beach Pier. Number two, downtown LA. Now, downtown LA has a very unique reputation being honest here in LA. The main reason why is on one end, there are tons of bars, restaurants, places to check out. It's a very lively place. On the other end, out of any place in LA, I gotta be honest, it's one of the most sketchy. So of course, you do wanna be careful and safe and just aware of your surroundings, but there are great spots in downtown LA. Spire 73, for example, is the highest open air bar in the Western Hemisphere. The view is beautiful. In addition, Perch is another kind of classic or staple here in LA. You also have Seven Grand, which is a great cocktail bar. And inside of Seven Grand, you also have Bar Jackalope. That is just a few of the bars in that area. In addition, this is also a very big hotspot for EDM nightlife. Of course, for me being a DJ and everything, this is also the biggest spot when it comes to places like Exchange. So when it comes to going to that nightclub, but in addition, the afters. If let's say you have one of those nights, we want to go all night and let's say you get done at 2 a.m., but you're really just starting because the afters or the after parties typically start around 3 a.m. All the afters and all the after parties are all typically in downtown LA. This is also typically where you have these EDM warehouse parties that are very underground, these kind of underground raves and everything. These are the best underground parties, in my opinion, when it comes to the EDM scene, if that's what you're into, like the DJ scene, warehouse raves, afters, all that kind of stuff. Number three, Santa Monica. Now, I will say some parts of Santa Monica are very touristy. It's one of the most touristy parts of LA, but there are a couple of different sections I'm gonna give you as kind of cool places to check out. One is a place called Harvell's. This is great for live jazz music and especially blues. Harvell's is awesome. Very hidden gem when it comes to live music. In addition, there's also a mini collection of bars kind of near there. We have places like Yo King's Head, which is a great one. The Bungalow is a big staple as well in Santa Monica. Although it's kind of tough about Bungalow, I'm gonna be honest, being very transparent on this video. The setup is insane. It almost has this like, house party feel, like where you're in someone's living room. It's a really cool setup. Then again, I feel like all the biggest typical materialistic LA people, they go to Bungalow. It, it kind of stinks, right? Because Bungalow is, the venue's awesome, 
but the drinks are a bit overpriced, gotta be honest. And in general, when you picture like LA people, that's typically what you're gonna get at Bungalow. So kind of bittersweet. In addition, you also have the Whirler and a couple other bars that are within like, I'd say a mile walking distance, sometimes a lot shorter. The second spot of Santa Monica, which I love, is Main Street. One place I gotta recommend right away is Vamos Vamos. Mexican corn is incredible. Right across the street, you have June Shine, which is hard kombucha. That's definitely like a love or hate. I love hard kombucha. I also love the June Shine spot. Some people like it, some people don't. You also have Jameson's, which is a great Irish bar. And you have the Victorian, which is kind of like the main staple of Main Street. Unique kind of house style setup. It It's a really cool place, Victorian, I gotta say. That being said, the line can get ridiculous. Same thing with the bungalow. When it comes to Main Street in Santa Monica, I gotta say that's probably my favorite street in Santa Monica with all these different locations. Number four, West Hollywood, AKA WeHo. Now the WeHo nightlife is very unique in my opinion compared to a lot of these other locations. And the main reason why is almost always West Hollywood is popping. It's always going off. One big stable needs to start with, I think is Barney's Beanery. It kind of gets a rap because a lot of people go there, it's kind of cliche, but it's kind of cool. You know, Quentin Tarantino wrote part of Pulp Fiction at Barney's Beanery. In addition, Jim Morrison used to sit at one particular chair at the bar and there's a plaque right there for him. But then as you go down the street, you then get to this huge area of bars slash nightclubs that's known as the biggest area for gay bars and gay nightclubs. The most notable one by far is the Abbey, arguably one of the biggest gay nightclubs and bars in the entire world. But in that area, you have all these different bars from Rocco's, you have Bayou, you have the Abbey, you have so many to mention. And what's great about this spot, gotta be honest, and there's a couple of things I'll mention, is one, it is crazy. Like I used to live kind of near this area and let's say on a Friday night, I'm like, ah, oh, what's kind of going on? I don't know, what's gonna be kind of good tonight? I don't wanna go out to this one bar and it be dead or this one area of LA and it to be kind of dead. West Hollywood is always insane. There's no other way I can word that. It is always a crazy time. It's always nuts. Just gotta be honest. The second thing, and I'd like to be very transparent in all my videos, always, is when it comes to that area of West Hollywood, pretty much that square with the Abbey, Bayou, um, Rocco's, all these different bars, pickpocketing is unbelievably common. Almost all my friends have had their phones pickpocketed while going out there. Being honest, pickpocketing isn't that common in LA. Like, you should be aware of it, obviously, but it's not that common. Like, I never think about it. I never worry about pickpocketing in LA. However, at that West Hollywood kind of area with all those bars, pickpocketing, for whatever reason, is unbelievably common. There's even signs all over the place about it. And there is one thing I feel like I do have to mention, just to be aware of, but I gotta say, those bars and those nightclubs are always crazy, always awesome. In my opinion, one of the most guaranteed spots in LA that you almost always know you're gonna have a fun time. And last, but definitely not least, number five is Culver City. This is a unique one because I feel like a lot of these people usually have heard of, like Hollywood or West Hollywood, Santa Monica, but this is a great hidden gem because I feel like for a lot of these, some of these are more raging, if I use that word, other ones are more low key. And I feel like Culver City is a good kind of blend Well, let's say if you wanna go out, you don't have a crazy night like West Hollywood, to be honest, but you wanna go bar hopping, hit some fun places and everything, Culver City is great for this, especially by Main Street. Ironically, Main Street being two spots, one in Santa Monica, one in Culver City. The first place to check out is Blind Barber. You can typically go there on the way to getting to the main area of Culver City by Main Street. Blind Barber is a speakeasy. It's a barber shop with a door in the back. You walk in, it's this huge bar right there. Then after Blind Barber, you can go to the main spot of Culver City. It's kind of this main downtown area with all these different spots like Citizens Public Market, Bar Bohemian, you have Rocco's, you have the 77 Lounge, which is a speakeasy inside of Rocco's. There are a lot of cool spots. In addition, Salt and Straw is there, which has phenomenal ice cream. And this is one of my favorite ice cream flavors ever. It's strawberry honey balsamic with black pepper. One of the most unique ice creams I've ever had. And what's great about this spot in Culver City is one, like I said, it's not raging and crazy, but it's also not boring and low key. It's kind of the perfect balance. If like you wanna go out, grab some great food, there are some great restaurants in that area. Go to a couple bars, have some nice drinks and everything. And then lastly, finish off at kind of the Culver City Locals Classic, and that is Backstage, your classic dive bar with karaoke. 